today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. We live in a world today where people want everything handed to them. They want it easy, they want it comfortable, I don't want any pressure, I don't want to have to make any sacrifices. But, you know, Christianity is just not that way. Learning the Word is just not that way. It takes effort. Hello everyone, I'm Carolyn Savell and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Faith. I appreciate you joining us and I know that you're going to be full of faith by the end of this broadcast. I'm excited for you to hear the second episode of Jerry's four-part series, No Boundaries. I encourage you to watch this message with open eyes and open ears and an open heart. Don't allow yourself to be distracted from what God wants to share with you today. If you grab a hold of the word being preached with this level of focus, I know you will receive everything you need to live a life free from limitations. So without further delay, let's listen to the good news Jerry has to share in part two of No Boundaries. Our subject is No Boundaries. We began last week reading from John chapter 17. If you have your Bibles, why don't we open our Bibles once again to these uh, scriptures beginning in verse 14. Jesus is teaching us here that the believer actually has no boundaries, no limits, praise God. Verse 14, I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Once again, if you haven't uh, underlined or highlighted that phrase, please do so because I want it to jump out at you every time you pass by John chapter 17. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, they is referring to his disciples, his followers, but it does not exclude you and me because verse 20, once again, he says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. So you and me are products of their preaching, what they preach, Peter, James, John, all those guys. It went down from one generation to another until it reached you and me. So once again, when Jesus said they are not of the world, he was including everyone who would eventually believe on him. Anybody in here believe on him? Then look at your neighbor and say, I'm in the Bible. (laughs) Amen. You're right there in the Bible. Praise God. So notice once again, he says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And then verse 16, he repeats that statement. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So apparently that is very important. I mean, everything Jesus says is important, but when he repeats it twice within two or three verses, uh, I don't know about you, but my spiritual antenna goes straight up. This is important. In other words, Jerry, don't, don't go any further. Don't read anything else. Stick around right here and get everything you can get out of what Jesus is saying because apparently this is a key to living a victorious life. Amen? And that key is this. We are not of this world. Now, once again, the message translation says that we are no more defined by this world than he is defined by this world. Jesus is saying that he was not defined by this world, meaning not marked by its boundaries. That's what defined means. Not marked by its boundaries. Can you see anywhere in the ministry of Jesus where he had limitations? Can you see anywhere in the ministry of Jesus where he was restricted or confined? Huh? You see any place in there where he says, well, you know, you finally stumped me. I mean, this is something I just can't get over. Uh, man, God, you've been with me all this time, but wow, we were doing so well. No, you won't find that. He had no limitations, no boundaries, no restrictions. And then he says, and they, speaking of his followers, you and me, they don't have any restrictions no more than I had any restrictions. And it's not because of who we are in the natural. And it's not because we're so smart and we're so brilliant and we're so mighty and we're so, you know, relentless. That has nothing to do with it. It's because 
of him being in us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yes. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. So because he's in us, that's what removes the limitations. Mm-hmm. Now notice also in verse 17, it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word sanctify means set apart. In other words, Jesus is saying what sets us apart from the rest of the world is the Word of God that's on the inside of us. Isn't that good? Praise God. You see, I get around people that don't know these things. You get around people like that. You may even work with people like that that don't know these things. So obviously they don't know any better. And they go around talking negative all the time. You know, they talk about what they can't do. They talk about what they can't have. They talk about this is impossible. And they use the phrase, no way, all the time. And, and when I'm around people like that and I hear that, that is so contrary to the way I talk. You know, uh, I remember a time in my life before Christ, BC I call it, before Christ, when I used profanity. You know, I, I used words that I shouldn't be using, you know, to express myself. Well, when I, when I got saved, you know, I, I quit talking like that. Yes. I didn't give it three amens. The rest of you didn't quit talking like that? <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, I quit talking like that. You know, I, I don't, I didn't use that kind of language anymore and haven't for years and years. And I don't miss it. You know, I don't, I don't care about talking like that again. But when I get around people who do use profanity, you know, it just kind of ties a knot in your spirit, you know. And particularly for me, I don't know why, but when I hear a woman in public using profanity, the way it seems like it's just commonplace today, you know, I mean, men and women alike, but I don't know. It just seems like it's degrading, you know, to hear a woman talk like that. And, uh, and I hear that kind of stuff and, and it just like ties knots in your spirit. Like, man, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be in this. You know, and I think I used to talk like that, but I changed and it was the word of God that changed me. Uh Well, wait a minute. I used to talk like that guy. He's not cussing, but he's always saying, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't have this. That's impossible. No way. To me, that's in the same category as the profanity. It's vain speech. Uh The Bible says in Proverbs 4, put away from thee a froward mouth. You know what the word froward means? A mouth that is uncontrolled. A mouth that is not under the conviction of the Word of God. In other words, if if you talk lack, won't, limitations, restrictions, I can't, no way, then in the Bible, that's referred to as vain. It's referred to as froward. It's referred to as perverse speech. Yes. And the Bible says, get it away from you. Mm. Now it's not a matter of you just standing in the mirror and say, I'll never cuss again. I'll never cuss again. I'll never cuss again. <laughs> or it's not a matter of you standing in the mirror and say, I'll never talk negative again. I'll never talk negative again. No, that's not the way you do it. Mm-hmm. You have to go to the word of God and renew your mind. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and change what's on the inside of you. Because once it gets down on the inside of you. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. See, I don't have to go around trying to make a good confession anymore. When I first started, I did because I was learning. But now I'm full of good confessions. There's nothing negative in there. We don't talk, you know, we don't talk one way in the pulpit and another way at the house. We just don't talk lack and want and sickness and disease and failure and defeat in our home. Yes. I mean, you know, you can ask my daughters. They, they, they've been around quite a while now, you know, and they've been in this right along with us. And, and you can ask them. They don't hear their daddy talk failure and defeat and lack and want and sickness and disease. We just don't talk that. We talk the Word of God. Yes. And I believe that has everything to do with whether or not you live a life without boundaries. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Jesus says, we are not defined by this world. We're not marked by its boundaries. Now, I close 
last week's broadcast with this statement. The only thing the Bible says that can limit or restrict us is, according to Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, a lack of knowledge. Everybody say a lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. But that's exactly why God put this book in your hands. Right. Hold that book up called the Bible. Amen. That's why he put this in your hands. Why? So you would no longer lack knowledge. Yes. Amen. This is the knowledge of God from cover to cover. Amen. Amen. And the fact that it's yours, it belongs to you, that means you now have access to God's knowledge. Amen. I'm going to make this statement. You're not going to like it. The only excuse anybody in this room or anybody watching this broadcast, wherever you might be, the only excuse you have for lacking knowledge, you're not going to like this, laziness. Laziness. Amen. It does take effort to get knowledge. I mean, even the knowledge of the world, it takes effort. That's why you went to school. You know, you just didn't wake up when you were three and you understood algebra, physics, and chemistry. You went to school to learn that knowledge. Amen. Well, you just don't wake up one day and you just know everything God knows. <laughs> It's a learning process. Yes. You can know what he knows because he put it in a book. Right. Somebody said, yeah, but didn't he say his thoughts are not our thoughts? That's exactly what he said. Isaiah, his thoughts are not our thoughts, but that's why he gave us the book. Amen. So our thoughts would become his thoughts Amen. and his Amen. thoughts would become our thoughts. Yes. And in the New Testament, it goes on to say, and we have the mind of Christ. Yes. So, you know, to... To, to not have the knowledge of God today, particularly with all the tools that God has given this generation to gain knowledge, yes. you can have all that and it can sit on the table. Right. It can sit in, the, in a shelf. You know, all these books we offer, they, they make lousy doorstops. They're for <laughs> reading. Right. You know, they're for learning. Yeah. Amen? They're for learning. And so to say, well, I just don't understand. Then what you just told me is, uh, I'm not putting forth an effort. So I just, I just like to get to the point, folks. This is the reason why I don't make a good counselor, because I like to get to the point. People like to beat around the bush. I like to get to the point. People come to me and say, my finances are in a mess. Are you a tither? No. Next. I'm through counseling you. You're not a tither. I already know your problem. Next. You know, nothing's working for you. Are you in the Word? Well, you know, I work all day and I do this and I do that and I got all these kids to raise. And I, well, you know, isn't it sad that God didn't know you'd have all this stuff to do and you'd have to be the exception that didn't have time to learn His Word? Amen. Don't write me no ugly letter. I'm not reading ugly letters. I only read the good ones. <laughs> Amen. Huh? I mean, if, if, if we don't have knowledge, then we can only come to one conclusion. We're just not putting forth the effort. Yeah. Right. Amen? Right. You know, if you seemingly don't have time, then maybe you need to take a time management course. Because right. God thought 24 hours in a day was enough. Amen. So maybe you have to get up earlier. I can't get up any earlier. Well, stay up later. Can't stay up any later. <laughs> Well, maybe during your lunch hour. No, I don't know. I can't do it then. Okay, we'll just go ahead and live an ordinary life. But while you're doing that, the rest of us are going to put forth an effort and we're going to gain knowledge. We're going to do whatever we have to do to get the knowledge of the Lord so that we will have no limitations. Amen? It's a, it's a conscious decision you have to make. Then you have to back it. Amen. Uh, we live in a world today where people want everything handed to them. That's right. They want it easy. They want it comfortable. I don't want any pressure. I don't want to have to make any sacrifices. But, you know, Christianity is just not that way. Amen. Learning the Word is just not that way. Amen. It takes effort. So that's why God put this book in our hands, so that we would have access to His knowledge. Proverbs chapter 4 Verses 20 through 22 says this, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Now, that's not really a suggestion. It is a command. 
my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. In other words, you have to make a conscious effort to gain or to obtain the knowledge of God. And you start by attending to the word. Amen. Attending to the word. Now, isn't it amazing that you can go to work and, uh, you know, uh, some guy that works with you, he can tell you everything they said on CNN last night on the evening news. Why? He was attending (laughs) to that. He was giving his attention to it. Or he can tell you everything the newspaper said about how bad the economy is. Tell you who the writer was, give you all the, you know, the, the facts and figures that he gave. Why? Because he attended to that. Somebody said, hi, how come you know the word like you do? Because I attend to it. (laughs) This is what I give my attention to. Now, that's not to say I don't watch the news. That's not to say I don't read the paper. You know, when I'm traveling sometimes, a lot of times I'll pick up a USA Today and put it on the airplane with me. And I I always start with the best stuff, the sports. (laughs) Then I go back and look at the headlines of that other stuff. And then I'll just point at the headline and say out loud, I'm redeemed from that. I'm redeemed from that. I'm redeemed from that. Okay, I've read the news. Praise God. (laughs) That's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm focusing on. That's not what I'm going to give my undivided attention to. Amen. He says, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. And then he says this, for they are life unto those that find them. Now, if you will do that, he says it will produce life. What kind of life? An extraordinary life. Not just an ordinary, common, run-of-the-mill life like the rest of the world lives. It's going to produce an extraordinary life. But notice the part you play in it. Attending to the Word. Listening to the Word. Staying focused on the Word. Retaining the Word. And as a result of it, it is going to produce an extraordinary life. That's my testimony. I'm living an extraordinary life because 46 years ago, I started following the manufacturer's handbook. Amen. I started reading the directions, praise God, the instructions. I mean, you know, if anybody knows anything about success, it'd have to be God. And this is his word. He told Joshua that if you will keep this word in your mouth, Joshua 1.8, keep this word in your mouth. Meditate on it by day and by night. Observe to do it. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Amen. Amen. So I find scriptures like that. And, 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 you know, he said, be a doer of the word. So I began doing that. And even though it didn't all come to pass overnight, it began as a process. And then praise God, we could see it working here a little, there a little. Then the next thing you know, man, life is changing. Praise God. I don't think like that guy. I don't talk like that guy. And now I don't live like that guy. Amen. Praise God. So they are life. Listen to the message translation. I love this. It says, those who find these words live, really live. Amen. When you find the word of God and you retain it and you make it first place and final authority in your life, then the Bible says from the message translation, you will begin to live, really live. Amen. You could call it life at its best. I like to call it the high life. It's living the high life, but it all begins with a decision to get knowledge. Amen. If knowledge is the one thing or lack of knowledge is the one thing that will limit you, then if you got a brain, you can figure this out all by yourself. And I know you do get knowledge. Amen. Amen. That's the way I thought. I mean, I didn't have to have Oral Roberts, Kenneth Copeland or Kenneth Hagin to give me that revelation. If you don't have knowledge, you're going to perish. If you have knowledge, you're going to start living life, really live. Amen. Amen. So I chose to get knowledge and it began as a, as a process that I'm telling you, I could have quit the first day because I'd never read the Bible before. 
I don't know anything about the Bible. I knew some stories that I learned in Sunday school as a little boy, but as far as reading the Bible, I didn't read the Bible. I let the Sunday school teacher read it. That was his responsibility, teach us the stories. And then after that, we leave and go home and play baseball. You know, forget that until next Sunday. And uh, I, I remember starting in that guest bedroom of ours and opening up to page one, Genesis chapter one. I figured it's a book. You start on page one. Now I got so bogged down in that. I thought, dear God, how am I supposed to understand this? You know, and, and the part, especially in the first part of Genesis where everybody's begetting this one and begetting that one and they give them names you can't pronounce. I don't like reading stuff I can't pronounce. Why don't they just name them Bill and Bob? <laughs> Methuselah, you know. And, and, and I got down into that and I come out of there and Carolyn said, did you learn anything? I said, no. She said, why not? You've been in there all day. I said, I don't understand this. She said, what is it you don't understand? I said, I'm reading Genesis and I, and I don't understand. And I don't like all these names I can't pronounce. She said, don't start in Genesis. Come back to Genesis later. Start in Matthew and get familiar with the ministry of Jesus. And then you can come back to the Old Testament. So I found Matthew. Now I'll be if they didn't start begatting again right there in Matthew. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and, and I thought, I can't understand this. How am I ever going to learn this? Where's my Hot Rod magazine? I understand that, you know, but Hot Rod magazine is not going to make a winner in life out of me. Amen. 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 Might make me a winner on the racetrack, but not in life in general. So it was difficult. And, and then somebody said, oh, get one of those amplified Bibles. It'll help you because it's in more modern day vernacular, you know? And so I got me an Amplified Bible and it did help. But learning this didn't happen all in one night. Right. And I had, to, I had to break through that, that temptation to give up when I didn't understand. Sometimes I just have to walk away and, and, and then come back later and read. And then praise God, I began to get resources from other ministers like Oral Roberts and Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagin and T.L. Osborne, who had already learned. They'd already been through this process a whole lot longer than I had. And they began to give their insights on their resources and their books and tapes and so forth. And that helped me. And then, praise God, it became not their revelation, but it became my revelation. Yes. Even though they may have helped me get to that place, but it became my revelation. This is what I'm doing now, not just because I heard they did it, but because I saw it in the Word. It's real to me, praise God. Amen. Amen. And my life began to change. And eventually, I left living just a normal, you know, human being kind of life to a life that God had planned for me. Amen. Amen. The high life. Amen. And if I can do it, folks, anybody in this room can do it. Anybody watching this program can do it. Because I was not the brightest fellow on the planet when I started this. Amen? Don't say amen. You weren't there. <laughs> I wasn't dumb. I just didn't apply myself back in those days. You know, I just did what was necessary to get by. Hadn't been for physical education, I'd have never seen an A in school. You know, but anyway, uh, I didn't apply myself. But now that I got in the Word of God and it meant life and living life at its best, man, you talk about a person who began to apply himself. I found out I had, I had uh, things deep down on the inside of me for learning that I didn't know I had, you know. And I began to learn the Word, began to apply the Word. And the more I learned, because the Bible says if you continue in the Word, you'll know the truth, the truth will make you free. And the more truth I received, the less limitations I had. Amen. Hallelujah. And now, praise God, I can say, in Him, through Christ, I can do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we literally can live a no boundary lifestyle. Amen. It's up to you. It's up to you. Get in the word of God. Don't just keep this on the shelf, on the bed stand, on the coffee table. Pick it up. Get the resource. If you don't understand, if this is Greek to you like it was to me when I started, then get resources from other people who have already been through that and teach you how to gain the knowledge of God 
that is going to lead you to a victorious Christian life. Watch this announcement, and I'll be back in just a moment. Why settle for the ordinary when you can have the extraordinary? Many Christians are spending their lives living beneath their privileges as children in God's family. However, as children of God, we are created for more. In No Boundaries, Jerry Savelle reveals the unseen limits that have been holding you back from the life you are destined for. You will discover how to recognize boundaries, what makes you different from a limited world, the origins and causes of boundaries, proven keys to living life free from negative boundaries, and more. When you request today, you'll also receive the four CD set, Breaking Through the Impossible. Many are facing impossible situations, but God has a plan of victory for you. In this teaching, Jerry Savelle reveals the steps you must take to experience God's breakthrough power in your life. You have been created to live life more abundantly. So don't wait. Call or visit jerrysavelle.org to request this powerful combo today and live a life free from the negative boundaries trying to hold you back. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's episode too. Once you make acquiring knowledge from the Word of God your priority, you can truly start living the life God has intended for you to live. That's why I want to encourage you to consider ordering this month's special offer, which includes No Boundaries book, and the Breaking Through the Impossible CD series. This book and this series is an inspiring read that is meant to energize your faith. And if you take the time to get into this book, I encourage you to highlight all of the little things that stand out to you so that the second time you read it, those things you've highlighted will become even more meaningful to you. Within the Breaking Through Impossible CD series, are hours of material designed to help you overcome any situation, no matter how impossible it may seem. Let this audio teaching guide you through the Word of God and encourage you throughout your personal testimonies. As you listen to it, you'll learn how to break through the impossible just like Jerry and I did. Together, these two resources will give you everything you need to live a life of victory instead of defeat. So don't delay. Go online to jerrysavelle.org and order this special offer today. As we close, I want to thank our partners for believing in this ministry and supporting our outreaches around the world. It's your support that enables us to do what we do, which is sharing the gospel to all those who are willing to listen. Thank you and know that I love you. And to all who are watching, thank you for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week to hear part three of Jerry's series on No Boundaries. As you go about your week, remember that God wants us all to live an abundant life and he wants us to live it right now. Make the decision to seek him and to meditate on his word. And I guarantee your life will never be the same. I'll see you next week. And until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world.